Hi, I'm Jack, and I do things. So recently the Hay Festival announced that to coincide with Eurovision this year, they would run an inaugural Eurovision book contest, which aims to celebrate fiction from each of the 37 countries that are competing in Eurovision this year. And at the festival, a panel of judges will discuss each of the 37 books that have been selected to represent their country. The best part is that anyone can nominate a book. It can be from any language or genre. It just has to be from one of the eligible countries competing this year. So if you're interested in taking part, head over to their Twitter page and get involved. Running alongside that, Helen from Helen's Bookhaven is hosting a Eurovisionathon reading challenge. And I want to join in. So for the last couple of days, I have been scouring the internet for books from each country, which has been a challenge in itself. And I have decided to share my findings with you lovely lot. I've tried really hard to find books written by authors from each country, uh, a lot of which are in translation, but there will be a couple that are perhaps about that country or maybe set in that country. I've also tried to prioritise shorter books because there's a lot to get through. I highly doubt that I will get to each country, but it's nice to have options and perhaps a couple of fallbacks in case a couple are a little bit more tricky to get hold of. So, to the books. So, let's go through this alphabetically. So the first country is Albania, The Palace of Dreams by Ismail Kadari. Um, Kadari is a leading figure in Albanian literature and has written many books. So there's quite a few to choose from, but this was the one that particularly caught my eye. Uh, the blurb says, a sinister totalitarian ministry called The Palace of Dreams recruits Mark Alem to sort, classify and interpret the dreams of the people in the empire, seeking the master dreams that give clues to the empire's destiny. She feels quite reminiscent of 1984, and at 205 pages, is pretty manageable. Another potential option is Mud Sweeter Than Honey, Voices from Communist Albania by Margot Raymer, who is actually a Polish author. This is a non-fiction book about Albania after the breakup of the Soviet Union and what it was like to live in a totalitarian state. I know nothing of Albanian history, so whilst this isn't written by an Albanian, I think this would be a very interesting book to get to. Armenia, Three Apples Fell From The Sky by Noreen Abgarian. Um, this one I'm quite excited to get to. It seems this book is about love and community set in the Albanian mountains. I believe it centres around a, a gossipy village and their attempts to matchmake two single people. Australia, Picnic at Hanging Rock by Joan Lindsay. This is a classic that I have been meaning to read for a long time and I think now might be that time. It is also only 189 pages. This is about three girls who at a picnic one day go missing I'm never seen again. Another option that I am eyeing up is 10 Steps to Nanette by Hannah Gadsby. This is an autobiography by stand-up comedian Hannah Gadsby and how she dealt with growing up gay in the 80s and 90s in Tasmania, which until 1997, homosexuality was still illegal and how she came to write her show Nanette, which if you haven't seen it, do. It is extraordinary. Austria. Dream Story by Arthur Schnitzler. This is a classic book from someone who was a contemporary of Sigmund Freud. And most famously, this was the inspiration for the play The Blue Room, but also the movie Eyes Wide Shut. This is about a married couple who begin to share and explore their sexual fantasies with each other. Um, the blurb says, taking us on a guided tour of Vienna's seedy cafes, red light district, decadent villas, hospitals and morgue, Schnitzler brilliantly uncovers the violence and depravity lurking beneath the surface of civilised society. And it's only 117 pages. Azerbaijan, The Orphan Sky by Ella Leia. This is a fantasy novel about music and love and friendship. The blurb says, set in the Middle East, the orphan sky mirrors the ancient Azerbaijani legend of Maiden Tower. Once upon a time when the evil Shah of Darkness ruled over the land of fire, when the orphan sky peered at the Caucasus Mountains from the Black Dome of Sorrow. This sounds very interesting, very exciting, but I am finding it a little difficult to find. So hopefully I can remedy that. Belgium! Bruges L'Amour by Georges Rodenbach. This is another one that might be a little bit tricky to find, but I am very intrigued by it. It's about a man who is mourning the death of his wife um, and becomes obsessed with a young 
dancer. I think she might be the double of his wife, which sounds a lot like the movie Vertigo. It sounds dark and gothic and having been to Bruges a few years ago, it sounds very in keeping with the feel of the city and it's only 100 pages. Croatia, Baba Yaga laid an egg by Dubravka Ygresic. Baba Yaga is a character from Slavic folklore who steals and eats children. But the blurb says, but what did she have to do with a writer's journey to Bulgaria in 2007 on behalf of her mother? Or with a trio of women who decide in their old age to spend a week together at a hotel spa? Sounds like this is a fairy tale retelling with a lot of magical realism. Cyprus. Now the one I've chosen is The Beekeeper of Aleppo by Christy Lefteri, who is a British-born author to Greek Cypriot parents. And this book is about Syrian refugees who have had to flee their homeland and are passing through Turkey and Greece on their way to Britain. And I feel that this is particularly relevant, this book, right now. Czech Republic. Time for another classic, methinks. The Trial by Franz Kafka. I've never read any Kafka, however, I did see the play of this in 2015 um, at the Young Vic, where I was so tired that all I was trying to do was stay awake the entire way through, rather than, you know, pay attention to the story. The blurb says that this is a book about Joseph K, a respectable bank officer who is suddenly and inexplicably arrested and must defend himself against a charge about which he can get no information. It seems like it's another book about totalitarianism, which is a bit more of a theme than I was expecting. <laughs> through this. Denmark. So I think it's time to just briefly step away from the dark dystopic depths and move to something a little lighter. A Scandinavian Summer by Helga Jensen who is a British Danish author. Um, she writes women's contemporary fiction uh, so this is firmly in the rom-com arena and this one is a book about a woman called Martha who after the premature death of her husband decides to book a trip to Denmark where no doubt love, misunderstanding and hopefully a happy ever after ensue. Estonia. Now, can I tempt you with some historical fiction? The Willow King by Milis Friedenthal. This says, wrapped into his long coat against the incessant rain and accompanied by a strange parrot, a young Dutch student, Laurentis, arrives in Estonia on an icy day at the end of the 17th century. Laurentius has been searching obsessively for a cure for the mysterious melancholy which torments him, but the more he searches, the more he is attracted to the world of instinct, superstition and magic, a world which he knew as a child, but which now persecutes him in his dreams and visions which increasingly blur with reality. I really hope I can find this one, because this seems right up my street. Finland. Norma by Sophie Oksanen. Um, now, I'm not a massive fan of magical realism. I know a couple have already turned up on the list. <laughs> But the selling point of this book really hooked me in. It says, the hair-raising mashup of feminist X-Men, gothic fairy tale, family saga, and biting social criticism that is taking Europe by storm. I mean, this is about a girl who has supernatural hair that changes with her moods, but can also alert her to danger. And I believe it turns into a bit of a mystery novel where she potentially has to find her mother's killer. France. The Second Sex by Simone de Beauvoir. Um, this is a classic non-fiction book about feminism and exploring the inequality and the othering of women. Georgia, The Pear Field by Nana Timishvili. I'm so sorry if that's wrong. This is about the children of an orphanage outside of Tbilisi who that treats children dreadfully. Um, and how one girl takes it upon herself to try and help the children escape. Germany. Luckily, this one was already on my TBR. It is Nature's Mutiny, and I am going to have to read the rest of this title, because it's quite long. How the Little Ice Age of the long 17th century transformed the West and shaped the present, by Philip Blom. This is a non-fiction book about how the temperatures dropped drastically at the end of the 16th century, and how that then impacted Europe. Greece. Scorpion Fish by Natalie Bacopoulos. This is, I believe, a love story between a young woman called Mira 
and a sea captain and how they swap stories from their apartment balconies. I really like the sound of this one. Iceland to Moonstone by Sion. It's set in 1918 Reykjavik and is about a 16 year old boy called Manny Stein. It involves the aftermath of the First World War and then the outbreak of Spanish flu. But it's also about a misfit boy trying to find his way in the world. Ireland. Small Things by Claire Keegan. I have been wanting to read this one for ages. It's set in 1985 and I believe it's about an Irish man who goes up against the church. It's been nominated for a ton of awards and it is only 128 pages long. Israel. Letters to My Palestinian Neighbour by Yossi Klein Halevi. This is non-fiction which I think Think could be set out as um, letters and addresses the Palestinian Israeli divide but from an Israeli point of view. I know a decent amount of the on this subject uh, but mainly from the Palestinian perspective so it'd be very interesting to read it from a different point of view. I'm very keen to get to this one. Italy. Probably no surprises here. My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferranti. Um, I want to see what all the fuss is about. This is the first in her Neapolitan series. It's about two friends, Eleanor and Lila, and their life in Naples. Um, I'm pretty sure this is semi-autobiographical -autobiograph too. Latvia. The Girl Who Learned All the Languages in the World by Eva Flamingo. This is a children's book about Leila who vows to learn all the languages in the world one word at a time. And it just sounds delightful. Lithuania. Tula by Jörg Kansinas. Lithuania was one of the hardest ones to find. It seems that not many Lithuanian authors are translated into English. Uh, this is set in Vilnius and it seems to focus on the tragic love story between the unnamed narrator and the misfit Tula. It seems to be a little bit fantastical, a little bit grimy and bohemian, and is apparently considered a modern day Lithuanian classic. Malta, a cat story by Ursula Murray Husted. I try very hard to find out whether she is uh, a Maltese author or not, but I couldn't find anything conclusive. If anything, I think she might be an American author. However, I did have to include this graphic novel that is set in Valletta and is about two cat friends on a journey to find their forever home. It looks absolutely adorable. Moldova, The Good Life Elsewhere by Vladimir Lorchenkov. This is about a group of villagers and their efforts to move from Moldova to Italy for work. It's meant to be funny and satirical and grotesque and is about a country that has sort of been left behind. The Netherlands. We had to remove this post by Hannah Bevetz. This is about a group of young people working as social media content moderators, reviewing violent or illegal videos. But then things start to go wrong and their jobs start impacting and begin to merge with their real lives. It sounds like a claustrophobic psychological thriller. Norway. The Faster I Walk, The Smaller I Am by Kirsty A. Sconsfeld. More contemporary fiction and I believe this one is about a woman called Matea who reads obituaries and decides to set out into the world in order to disappear. I think that's what it's about. Poland. Czukas by Sofia Nokowska. This is set in the 20s in a Swiss sanatorium and it brings together characters from different countries, different political ideals, puts them in a metaphorical pot and sort of stirs things up. Portugal. Death at Intervals by Jose Saramago. This one sounds very fun. In an unnamed country on the first day of the year, people stop dying. It says, initially greeted with joy, the change soon begins to wreak havoc until death returns. Not only that, but death is depicted as a woman. That always piques my interest. Romania. Bottled Goods by Sophie Van Leeuwen. This was long listed for the Women's Prize in 2019 and takes place under communist Cuesco's regime of the 1970s. This is what the blurb says. Weaving elements of magical realism, Romanian folklore and Kafkaesque paranoia into a gritty and moving depiction of one woman's struggle for personal and political freedom, Bottled Goods is written in short bursts of flash fiction and explores universal themes of empowerment, liberty, family and loyalty. San Marino. Sorry, San Marino. I couldn't find anything. If anyone does, please let me know in the comments down below. 
Serbia, Catch the Rabbit by Lana Basatisic. This is billed as a psychological thriller. It then begins to morph as they remember the brother who disappeared during the Bosnian War and they still believe him to be alive. Sounds very intriguing. Slovenia, Blind Man by Mitch Ikanda. This is about a book editor with severely impaired vision who is lured into the world of politics and subsequently blinded by power. Do you see what they did there? I believe this is meant to be on the funny side rather than the serious side, but I suppose we'll have to wait and see. Spain. Even the Darkest Night by Javier Circas. This is the first in the Melchor Marin detective series. It's a whodunit set in rural Catalonia and involves the murder of a wealthy local man and his wife. Sweden. In Every Mirror She Is Black by Lola Akinmade. Akastrum. This has been up for a slew of awards. It's about three black women all linked to the same white man in Stockholm and it follows the point of view of all three women when the blurb says touches on important social issues of racism, classism and tokenism and what it means to be a black woman navigating a white dominated society. I've had my eye on this one for quite some time so I'm quite keen to get to this one. Switzerland, Heidi by Johanna Spiri. This is a classic novel that I have never read. It's about a little orphan girl who goes to live with her grandfather in the Alps. Sounds idyllic, relaxing. <laughs> delightful. Ukraine. Death and the Penguin by Andrei Kirchhoff. This is a mystery crime novel about a writer who wants to write short stories but is stuck writing obituaries. But then he seems to be drawn into some kind of trap from which it appears to be no escape. He also has a pet penguin. And here we are. We have reached the end. I've not included the UK in this list because I don't see the point. If you would like a few more suggestions for certain countries um, or would like to chart your progress, it is a reading challenge over on Storygraph, so go and check that out. Going through this list, there is no way that I'm going to get to every single one, um, but however, I will make an attempt to vlog the ones that I do get to. So if you would like to see my progress over the next month or two, make sure to check back in, or better yet, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a thing. Thank you for joining me on my marathon book list. Until next time, happy reading.